Hi, you're watching 20 Questions With. I'm Harry Reardon, author of The Recluse on Amazon and Audible. Thank you so much for watching. Before you do anything, hit the bell, like, subscribe. Thank you so much. Jay, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I am a psychedelic counselor. I do integration therapy with people and also I guide people through psychedelic journeys. So how did this start? Uh, I'm in, it started, I think where most of us who are in this field start with my own journey. Um, I've been working in the field of mental health for 15 years and have really just been trying to find the thing that works through I've, I've started working with wards of the state, uh, when I was like fresh out of college and none of them actually like leave the cycle. We're not, we're not really helping people. And I was so confused about that my entire career of how we're still continually doing this form of therapy when it doesn't really seem to help people um, in, in, in the way that we could be helping people. And uh, I got turned on to psychedelics by a friend, used them for my own healing. And it was so profound that I had to bring it into my work. It, it really, really works. What was the difference that you found? I mean, through what, uh, the outcome for one person that's not taking them, a person that is? Um, they, they speed everything up. So if, if you can imagine that the, the, the whole purpose of the rational mind is to stop you from getting into that like subconscious, that's the whole reason it's there. Or one, one, you know, one very strong reason the rational mind exists is because what is in the subconscious, the rational mind believes would overwhelm us, overtake us, and so the rational mind is like a lid on that. And so no matter how much talk therapy you do, you're not going to get up and under that rational mind. Um, so the, the psychedelics allow for that to sort of lift off the basement a little bit. And the things inside there have the, have the potential or the ability to come out and we can actually look at them uh, in a much different way than, than like strict talk therapy works. Let's go right back to the beginning. What, when were you first introduced to psychedelic, psychedelic drugs and how did you find them? Yeah. Um, well, I live in Berkeley, California, and we've been, you know, Northern California, specifically Berkeley, has really been on the forefront of the work around consciousness for a really long time. Um, so I was living in a, in a, I, I, study Eastern philosophy as well as mental health. And I was living in a Buddhist center. Um, and, you know, especially in that part of the world in Northern California, uh, psychedelics and enlightenment are sort of bound together, you know, like it kind of goes beyond the scope of mental health into a different form of spirituality. Um, so I had a good friend who was in a training uh, to use psychedelics and I had another friend who just happened to have a tablet of ecstasy. And I uh, was really just interested to understand what it would feel like in my own body to be able to lift that rational mind. Um, so I, I split it in half and I, I set myself up one morning in the same way that I would set myself up for any other kind of ritual and took a half a tablet. Um, and it, it, you know, that, that wasn't the one I've had several journeys. That wasn't the one that really like popped for me, but, um, it definitely made a difference. I could sense that something was different. I could sense that there was some movement in places that there hadn't been movement. That was about five years ago. And, and then you, how long did it take from the first experience to then introduce it into your therapy? Oh, about eight, eight months is when I first had probably had my first client, um, use some of my first client. Did you, what was the, the first response, especially just even to introducing it? Like, um, you know, th there's your therapist, you're going through the system and then you just sort of like, Hey, you want to try some psychedelic drugs? I don't know how you would approach someone with that sort of sure. thing, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I see people who don't use psychedelics and I see people who do. And so the people who do use psychedelics generally find me through, through the referral pathways or forums where you can find those folks, they, they, they seek out someone like me who uses psychedelics. So 
I'm not, I mean, I, I, I do and have offered it to other clients, but most of the folks who use the psychedelics are looking for someone specifically who into, um, incorporates psychedelics into their therapy work. What are the sort of legal ramifications for this? Like, is there something you have to, it's like, well, yeah. 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 Um, So it's, it's becoming, um, you can be a a legal researcher for MAPS, which is the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies. Those are the folks who are putting on all of the, um, all of the, the, studies that are that are going on so you can you can legally work with some of this stuff uh most of the time people are doing it underground there's there's certain types of trainings that you can like um it like for instance in in oakland california psilocybin is decriminalized so you can have it but you can't sell it and so that type of therapy inside of the bounds of oakland would be legal and what is, sorry, psilocybin? What is this? Psilocybin is uh, uh, mushrooms. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, psychedelic mushrooms. The, the active ingredient that makes you uh, trip is called psilocybin. Uh, what exactly does psychedelic therapy consist of? Uh, it consists of a series of what we call journeys, which are six to eight hour, I mean, depending on the psychedelic that you're using, um, sessions with a therapist. And then in between those sessions are integration sessions. So in between the journeys, there are integration sessions to be able to integrate. So imagine you do 10 years of therapy in one day. That means you have a lot on your plate going forward. So the integration sessions are meant to help sort of slowly work that into your, into your system, work it into your everyday life, take those lessons that you learn from the medicine and incorporate them. So depending on the psychedelic, you could have a journey once every two months to once every six months, um, you know, de- depending on the work and, and the trauma and all the things that are, that are there. Um, but the, the journeys, um, the journeys really kind of show people where their work is, I guess. Um, and then the time during the time when you're not journeying, you're really trying to, um, like undo all of those knots, you know, kind of just like shines a spotlight on the knot. And then you're like, Oh, all right. Guess I better get to unraveling. Do you, do do you take, um, like, do you take some with your patients to get a better understanding of what they're they're going for in that moment? Are you there? Are you on the outside journey and them in? Yeah. Um, sometimes I will microdose a different, so, you know, there's some things like for instance, MDMA, you can't really microdose that. So, you know, when, when I have patients on MDMA, like they, I, maybe I would microdose mushrooms or something for me, it really depends on the space that I'm in that day. Um, but I, since I, you know, I've, I've done all of my own, I've done my own journey. So I, I fully understand, um, where they are in, in space as they're journeying. When they take something like MDMA, are you there for the come down as well? Mm-hmm. So you- not, I mean, not, not for this, not for the several days afterwards, but. Um, we do an integration session the following day. So generally I run journeys on Saturdays and then on Sundays we'll have a, a a check-in if they're local in person, if they're not, we'll do it over, over zoom. What, what was your experience like on MDMA? Well, every journey is different. Um, it's really incredible the way that when, when we use it therapeutically, the, 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 the way that I, the analogy that I use for this is like, mushrooms, they, they take the subconscious and they blow it up really big. So it's, you know, it's like a waking dream. MDMA, like it wipes the mud off of the windshield and you're just, you're seeing so clearly. So if you, if you, I guess what I can say is it makes everything make sense. And that's really helpful because so much of the time we're confused by so much. We're confused by our own behavior. We're confused by other people. We're confused by the world sometimes. Um, And so being able to sit in a space where things make sense is really helpful. And during that time, you're, you're at such a high level of consciousness with the MDMA because the amygdala is turned off essentially. So there's very little fear. And so without fear, we have like 
full control of the frontal cortex, right? There's like a lot more in there that we have access to because when there's stress hormones, you know, we sort of slowly lobotomize ourselves. So we're at such a high level of consciousness that it's really easy to see things that we wouldn't be able to see um, when we're not on them. So that's, that's been my experience really is like, it really helps me clarify. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. Sorry. And how do you go about finding your clients or do they find you? It's a mix. Um, I, I post on some uh, anonymous forums and, you know, like once you, once you post for a while that like people get to know you and they understand that you're a practitioner. Um, sometimes it's word of mouth. Some people find me through just people in my community. So it's, it's, it's really a mix. Can you give an issue, uh, example of some of the issues clients have come to you with in the past? Sure. Um, a lot of people actually that, that come to me when psychedelics isn't really a form of medicine that is well known yet or well understood. And so it's, it's really kind of considered like a frontier, you know? And so when people come to me, they generally come to me because they are at the end of their rope. They don't know what else to do. And it's, you know, they, the, the trauma is mostly complex PTSD. I don't see a lot of people with PTSD, like just, you know, like for instance, um, uh, you know, like someone, someone passed, right. It's like, everything was fine. And then someone died in a car accident or something like that, or they were in a car accident. That's like one event would be PTSD. Most of my clients have complex childhood trauma. Um, and when that happens, the, the world just gets really confusing. It's hard. It's hard to do anything. It's really hard to like, especially the older you get, it's hard to be an adult to, to function. And so they get really Um, yeah, they just, they get really desperate. And then that those are often the folks I work with, work with, or I I have a fair amount of folks who have had a bad experience with other, with another psychedelic and are, are using MDMA to heal from the trauma of that experience. I suppose what what most people look for in drink and drugs anyway is an escape, right? Especially if you've got that weighing on your mind, your childhood trauma uh the, the questions that come with that yeah. why did this happen you yeah. know um why some people you know why did i deserve this you know what was the yeah sometimes we look for that we look for that in the bottom of a bottle we look for that in the bottom of you know so what you're doing is you're guiding these people through it rather than them being on their own i think that i think that's amazing i think that's absolutely fantastic that you that you do that you know and yeah it's mm-hmm. no no sorry carry on no please Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's really, it's really beautiful work and it's really interesting to me. You know, I, I, I do guide because there, you know, there are some things I've spent a long time studying the mind and how it works. And so there are some things that I just, that I know now, but, but there's also everyone knows so much, like when, when you give them the chance to to take that fear away when you give them the chance to let that amygdala calm down, they, they coach themselves a lot of the time, like what, while they're on the medicine, it's harder to do when you're off the medicine, but so many people really will just start like getting it, just things click. And it just, it's like a snowball. It keeps rolling. So would you say more like, obviously the way you describe it, having these things it, that opens their mind to become more clear, to be more open to mm-hmm. to processing grief and trauma mm-hmm. with like say something like mdma which just kind of just kind of makes you feel good and it opens you up to that so that makes sense i suppose sense. yeah no not at all um so like having having that especially with you guiding them yeah their, their mind's more open to 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 acceptance of the past yeah yeah what i think so the 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 different psychedelics work in different ways, but with MDMA specifically. So if you, let me, I'll back up, um, you know, trauma, when trauma happens, the brain protects, right. Us from experiencing it in some way, shape or form, which is really beautiful in that one moment. If the brain didn't do that, you know, like we would be in trouble, but then it, it hangs on to that protection and projects it into the future. And so 20 years down the road, you could still have this protective mechanism 
that is completely no longer serving you. And so in order to remove that protective mechanism, we have to go back and process that stuck trauma. And that is the really hard thing. Nobody wants to think about the trauma. It's too, right? So MDMA allows us to go back and experience and actually feel that, that trauma and process it without being re-traumatized. So that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're going for um, in that is a, a stronger capability to hold the really challenging feelings. What are some of the biggest psychedelic therapy success stories that you've encountered or experienced? Oh, I love talking about the success stories. It makes me really happy. Um, I mean, you know, it's so interesting. I have, I have uh, one client who um, came to me for depersonalization. Uh, they, this, this person like had a really harrowing thing happen to them when they were like 18 or 19 and just their body sort of completely shut down. They couldn't feel anything. Um, and we've been working together for maybe eight or nine months. And, uh, they're, they're really, uh, you know, leaps and bounds beyond where they were and ex- really like able to explore, um, they're, they, they grew up in a pretty conservative place and there are, uh, things that they're exploring now with the help of the medicine that they would never that they would never have been able to explore before. I'm trying to be very vague because I can't um, divulge too much. Of course. Um, but, but I mean, suffice it to say that th- their whole life is a 180 from what it was before. Um, thanks to the help of this medicine. And um, I have another client who came to me uh, from the, like, a proponent of the, the red pill community. I don't know if you know what that is. No, sorry. Just, it's pretty, um, it's pretty hard for me. Uh, it's like, just, do you know what an incel is? No. Uh, it's, it's just to the left. It's like, it's a, it's a, I don't know, maybe it just exists more in the States. Anyway, it came to me with, with a very sort of misogynistic attitude and, um, and, and, uh, really full of like self-hate and vitriol. Uh, and now, you know, we've been working together for a year and a, and a half and they're, they're much, much, much healthier. They're dating, um, in a really like much more gentle and, you know, and that's all they wanted really was to be able to be in the world. And, um, like they, they want a partner and a family. And I didn't know how to, how to do that. And it, and wound up getting sort of radicalized in the process. Um, wow. And so then, then they found me and now, you know, I, they said to me at some point uh, over the last like few weeks that they have never, ever been this happy. Nice. So that's, that's really like the promise that it, it offers us, some of us. That's amazing. Have there ever, any, have, there, have there ever been any times when a therapy session has gone wrong and a patient has had a bad trip? Yeah, well, we, we don't really use the term bad trip anymore because the even the challenging experiences are really beneficial. But um, yeah, I've had uh, one one client who was um, he they he was uh, he was using lots of different medicines outside of our sessions and wound up being hospitalized um, with psychosis. Uh, I have a, a, another client who was recovering from. Um, several, he was recovering from a very, 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 very challenging, um, mushroom trip and also wound up in the hospital. So, you know, these, the, this, these, that neither of those things happened on my watch, but these, um, you know, these, these medicines still have a, have some, have some dangerous capabilities in an, in an unstable mind. Have you ever had any brushes in, with the law due to your psychedelics or the use of? Not yet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. My, my understanding is that they're, they're not really looking, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have the kind of access like, right. That those folks are looking for. I'm not a, a dealer. Um, but I, I also don't think that anybody would hesitate to uh, arrest me 
for the use of this medicine, you know, I, I giving it to people, help, you know, helping people heal with it. Can you foresee a time when psychedelics are in mainstream use in therapy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already happening in the States. Uh, MDMA is in phase three trials to be legalized. Um, They're also, I mean, they're studying psilocybin, they're studying LSD. So I don't know what that will look like. I think it might be weird if like in, in, in big pharma and in the same way that like THC is now very corporate where it used to be a lot different. Um, haven't some states already started to legalize quite uh, quite a lot of drugs anyway yeah yeah um i think oregon passed uh i think they legalized like psilocybin and maybe lsd i don't i don't remember but i mean it's it's definitely happening and and that will be great if that's if that really uh if that catches on Um, absolutely when it does we'll get you back on no blur we'll both take yeah. some psychedelics it'll be great yeah that sounds wonderful <laughs> that'd be a very different kind of show but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm up for trying anything um what would you say to critics who claims it's claim it's dangerous to administer psychedelic drugs to people in need of th- therapy yeah um i mean i would say they they have a valid they have a valid uh, opinion um i I mean, I'll, I'll say I don't administer. I don't, um, you know, the people who come to me are really, they they have tried so many other things already and they don't know what else to do. And so I think when you're at the end of a rope, it's really hard to deny people an extra option. Um, and with the help of an experienced guide, you know, who's, not just someone who's trained, but who's been through it all themselves. Um, it, the, the risk of damage goes down quite a bit. If we're not, if we're not talking about like chemical damage and the, the, the jury is still out really on whether psychedelics are neurotoxic. In fact, there's some studies that say psilocybin is neurogenerative. So, um, you know, I, I can't say to anybody that they're not, that there isn't some risk in using them, but you know, there's about the same amount of risk as a night of binge drinking. I mean, it's not, Yeah. you know, I'd say probably more so with binge drinking, how many people drink drive or get drunk and fight or yeah. get, get drunk and they attack their families, you know, like it's yeah. such a, uh, and you know like not to put that down but there are uh, personal opinion there is such a more that more danger when it comes to alcohol than than drugs you know yeah no it's 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 true I, I i talk about that with people a lot yeah um what advice would you give to people who are looking to have psychedelic therapy mm, i would say uh don't give up it can be hard to to find a person to find medicine. Um, not every, not every like specialist has medicine. Um, so yeah, I, I, many of the people who have found me have found me after a long search. Um, so just stick with it. Uh, and the, the, the further we go, the easier it's going to be to find, to find someone. And, um, if you already have someone, just let go when you're, when you're on your journey. That's the most important part. What advice would you give to people who are looking to become a psychedelic therapist themselves? Oh, uh, well, first things first is do your own work. Um, really remove as many of the blockages, as many of the blockages as you can, because the work is not really about you. It's about, you being a channel for something, uh, something beyond us to come through. Um, so, uh, that's, I, I don't, I don't have any good, like you should go to this school and, um, cause they're not really, they're not really around yet. There's, there's a couple in the States that are underground, but, um, even those are sort of under scrutiny. So, um, 
you know, do, do journeys on, on, on your own or, or have a friend sit for you. And, and, you know, the, the more that you understand it, uh, the better you're going to be able to, um, walk with other people as they're going through their own stuff. What is your view on drug legalization for recreational purposes? Are you for or against it? Oh, that's a good question. I don't really think about it, to be honest. Um, I, I really don't, I mean, I never have used drugs recreationally, really. Like I didn't, I didn't really drink when I was younger. And so that just kind of followed me. Um, I didn't even, I didn't even know what pot looked like until I was like 25. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, I really have a, a, a stance on it because I don't, have a lot to do with that arena do you think there will ever come a point where all drugs are legalized seems like it from here i mean i i don't know but if it you know sort of the 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 west coast like sets the tone for the nation or it used to be that way i don't know what it is now um but like it so Cal, you know, like Oakland has decriminalized psilocybin. I think it was Oregon that did a bunch of decriminalization. DC has done a bunch of decriminalization. So to me, that, that seems like the, 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 the goalposts are up. Um, seems like a better way of doing it though. No legalize everything. And then you can, you can work on making everything more better and applicable. No, obviously yeah. that's down to personal opinions. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just, yeah. But yeah, from- I mean, I, I, I think, you know, you're, you're right. There's, there are loads of better ways to do it. Um, but yeah, my, 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 my hope is that, um, yeah, I, I mean, my, my hope is that we'll be able to use these substances freely for therapy, um, at, for at least therapy. Uh, they're, they're, they're exceptionally helpful and, and healing and they, they really work in so many ways that are current systems of of talk therapy don't so that's it what about i know it's not um psychedelic but what about the use of marijuana in therapy would that have any yeah. positive benefits mm-hmm. yeah actually um there 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 are um saj rasvi and i forget the other guy's name they're they they can use marijuana for psychedelic benefits it actually um it it bypasses you're almost like trying to create a panic attack. So, you know, many, many people who use marijuana, they get paranoid. And so if you're very still and you let that energy build up, it actually transcends back into like the autonomic nervous system and your, your body will shake and process trauma on its, on its own. It doesn't, doesn't go through the mind in the same way at like, um, as MDMA or psilocybin, uh, but it, it goes directly through the autonomic nervous system. So, uh, yeah, marijuana, uh, both as a journey drug and also, um, as a microdosing substance, like there's, there's a lot of good, good literature on how THC is neuroprotective. Um, you know, so there, there are definitely ways to use it in the therapeutic space. And finally, what are your plans for the future? And do you plan to continue to administer psychedelic, psychedelic therapy in the long term? I will do it for as long as they will let me. Um, I think it's really, it's really, really helpful. It's changed my life. Um, I've seen it change the life of others in, in a very short amount of time. You know, we, we don't get that long here. (laughs) We get this like precious hundred years of, of like being a human on either side of being who knows what. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, it makes me feel really good to be able to help people, um, you know, break through limiting beliefs and have a more like a fuller, happier, more loving existence. So, um, yeah, my, my, my plans are to keep moving on this for as long as I can. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to, um, to come on and chat with us. And if it does ever get fully legalized, I'm fully open to a a different type of show. (laughs) Just, (laughs) yeah, absolutely. Just, we might be the first one. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you so much. Before you go, please like and subscribe. And if you're going to comment, just take a second before you do. Think about what you're going to say. It goes a really long way. Thank you so much. Goodbye.